Hi everyone! For today's video, I'm doing a belated wardrobe post for this year. I know it's super late, but these sorts of posts does take a lot of time and effort to create, so I hope you guys will enjoy. I have covered the Angelic Pretty and Baby the Starshine Bright portions of my wardrobe in previous videos, so please be sure to check those out in the cards as well as the description box down below. Not much has changed for either of the brands except for a really big Baby the Starshine Bright order I finally received. So for this video, I'm going to be covering the rest of the Japanese Alita brands that I have in my wardrobe. There are four other major brands that I have in my wardrobe, and they are Victorian Maiden, Alice in the Pirates, Metamorphose Tom's Defeat, and Innocent World. So let's get started with the brand that I have the least of, and that is Victorian Maiden. I only have two pieces, but they are one of my most well-loved pieces that I wear quite frequently. The first one is the Plant Garden Frill JSK. This is one of my favorite JSKs. I love the tiered look and the ruffles on the bodice. It's quite comfortable to wear. The amount of ruffles and cut details on this make this one of my favorite pieces to wear. However, because of the amount of fabric used in this dress, it can get quite heavy. So my hand doesn't reach for it as often as I'd like. I really love the print itself on the JSK with the variety of flowers. And then the texture of the fabric is really lovely as well. Next up is the Marine Blouse OP. So this one piece can actually be used as both a blouse and a one piece, which makes this dress very versatile in my opinion. I love the back ruffles. It's one of my favorite features, and especially if you lift up the skirt to really showcase those frills, I think it's super cute and adorable. It's fully cotton, so it is quite breathable in the spring summer months when I particularly wear this piece. And I just really love all the ruffles and layers of frills that this OP offers and the versatility as well. All right, let's move on to Alice and the Pirates. The first JSK I want to talk about is my most recent purchase, and that is the Memory Frame of Royal Crown JSK 2. This is the white colorway, and it's a really great overall print. I really love that it's got full back shearing, and I really love the lace on the bottom. This is a high-waisted cut, and it's one of the most comfortable cuts for me, and I really enjoy the front frill detail. The next series I have two of, and that is the Wonder Car Chase series. I have both JSKs, and this is one of my favorite series that Alice in the Pirates has released in recent years. I actually really love Alice in Wonderland themed prints, and this is one of the best that Alice in the Pirates has actually released. I'm a really big fan of the heart details in the cuts itself. So you'll notice in the bodice itself there are hearts on it, and then the print is quite gorgeous as well. The colorways I have it is the ivory and the sax blue colorway, and I'm actually on the lookout for more colorways of this because it's one of my favorite series. The print itself features a car chase scene, a variety of the Alice in Wonderland characters, and I really enjoy the checkered ribbon detailing on the bottom. Despite having the same base illustrations, each colorway has its own unique feel to it, and it's one of my favorite series from Alice in the Pirates and is really underrated in my opinion. Alright, this next one is the Vintage Stamp Label JSK 2. This series was first introduced in 2018. I got to see it in Japan, and I also got to talk to the Alice and the Pirates designer about the inspiration behind this series. I didn't purchase the series while I was in Japan, however, just a few years later, I did end up purchasing this series from Closet Child, and it has become a staple piece in my wardrobe. It is a high-waisted cut, making this super easy to wear on the daily. My favorite little stamp label on this is the satisfaction guaranteed. This next piece I actually don't have on a hanger because it is on my to reconstruct pile and that is Magical Popping Fantasy series in the OP cut. The Magical Popping Fantasy series is a Mary Poppins themed print and this OP cut is absolutely gorgeous. However, the sizing is quite small so I've actually never fit into this piece. I am planning on deconstructing it to make it a little bit bigger. It is such a fun series. You have Mary Poppins in the background and then the words Super color fragilistic expialidocious is printed on here as well. Alright, this next OP is the Starry Moonlight Night Siren series. 
The cut is very reminiscent of the dessert OPs that I have from Baby the Starshine Bright. So it is quite loose and can fit a little bit more than the expected measurements, especially considering that Alice in the Pirates isn't really size inclusive. This is one of my favorite marine series. Gorgeous illustrations of mermaids on the bottom, the pearl detailing, and the mimicking of the waves as well as the ships on this. It's absolutely gorgeous. And then the last Alice in the Pirates dress that I have is the Innocent Rosier OP. This is one of my most frequently worn black dresses, especially during Halloween. It's got lovely, gorgeous lace, and then it practically is cut like a nightgown, so it is quite comfortable to wear. This piece works wonderfully as a blouse under pieces as well. So I really enjoy this OP, and it's one of the more versatile pieces that I have in my wardrobe. All right, let's move on to the Metamorphose Tom's Day Fees section. I used to really love Metamorphose skirts. They're quite versatile and they were fully sheared, making them very comfortable. However, I only have one left now and that is the Pink Lemonade series. The Pink Lemonade skirt is a skirt that I love wearing in the summer months. This is one of my favorites because of the jars of pink lemonade on it, the little bees doing little bee work, carrying things, and then they have drawn on lace and the shadow detailing it for is super cute. What can I say, I really love this series. Meta is really known for their kimono series, so I have several of them and I wanted to showcase the oldest one and that is the kimono print crossover front tucked laced hakama pinafore from 2013. This dress I got for a steal at Closet Child and I really love how busy the print itself is. Meta's kimono prints are superior because there is full back shearing so you can fit quite a bit and I really love the big bow up front. I don't wear this one as much as I should. The next kimono print that I have is the Dozing Cat series in the Saks colorway. I got this one from a local Lolita who was selling the series off because she had multiples. I really adore this series. It's got lovely cats and the Saks blue colorway is one of the special limited edition colorways from 2020 I believe and it was online limited and a certain store limited. It's super cute. A detail that I really love for this JSK specifically is the double waist ties. It really adds so much depth. Next up is a very cute summer series. This is the Juicy Basket Lace Up JSK. I purchased this from a Calgary Lolita and it is seriously so cute. It is chiffon and it's got little cutouts and printouts of fruits. So I really love wearing this one in the summer months. I love the flower detailings. It's such a solid series. Another series that Meta is particularly well known for is their Sailor series and I have the Sailor shirt dress. This is from the 2018 series I believe and they release these series every year and I think it's one of their signature looks. I really love this OP because it is a nightgown shaped so it is quite comfortable to wear. It does have working pockets on the front as well as one on the sleeve which doesn't really fit much but it's a cute design. The sailor collar on the back is quintessential in the summer months I feel and it is a great series that I love to wear in and out of Lolita. Seriously Meta does sailor Lolita so well. And then the last JSK that I have from Meta is the Romantic Kimono Tucked JSK. I have it in the navy colorway and this was one of my first kimono pieces from Metamorphose. It's got such lovely dark detailings and I really enjoy the contrast between the gold and the silver that they use for this series. This series has camellias printed on it and, and I really love the background because it's a quintessential Japanese pattern that I'm particularly enamored with. It is such a gorgeous, solid series. 
All right, so now with Meta out of the way, we are on to the last Japanese brand that I have in my wardrobe, and that is Innocent World. I really love Innocent World pieces. They take up the majority of my wardrobe because of how easy the pieces are to wear on the daily. So the first piece I'm gonna talk about isn't actually an Innocent World piece. It is an Innocent World white piece. I believe the sub-label of Innocent World didn't even last a year and a half, and there was only a few collections released under this sub-label. But it was supposed to be Innocent World's cheaper brand. However, I feel like because because it is their supposedly cheaper sub-label brand. The fabrics that they chose really reflects that price difference between regular Innocent World and this Innocent World white. So I got the Sailor OP. I believe this was only 8,000 yen when I purchased it. This Sailor OP is actually quite sheer and see-through, but it is quite comfortable to wear. There's really cute bows on the Sailor collar on the back, and it is quite solidly constructed. The only downfall was the fabric itself. It is quite sheer and see-through through. So enough about Innocent World White, let's talk about regular Innocent World. And the first series I want to talk about is the Strawberry Tart Lace OP. This is one of my favorite OPs to wear in the summer months, but it's got strawberry tarts on the bottom as well as a cup of coffee. This is more of a sack dress, so it fits quite comfortably and is one of those pieces that I just throw on and run out my front door. The color itself is actually quite faded, but the strawberry print is still crisp and wonderful. It's such a great summer series from Innocent World that I love wearing. The next OP is the Mary Rose OP. This is a really lovely series that has flowers and I really love the color detailing of it. It is a classic ivory shade and I think it is quite comparable to Victorian Maiden and Mary Magdalene's floral pieces. It's a very solid series that works wonderfully in the spring months. Next up is the Strawberry Plate Jumper Skirt. And this print features strawberries on plates. And in case you forgot what this print was, it actually has printed on it Innocent World Strawberry Plates in cursive, which is super cute. I purchased this JSK because of the cut itself. It's a little rare to see this sort of collar detailing for an Innocent World piece, and the back is fully sheared. It comes with a really cute belt, and I really enjoy this series. All right, I have a few longer Innocent World pieces, and this first one is the Strawberry Doll Bouquet JSK. This was released in 2020. I thought this series would actually be embroidered, but it wasn't. It's just printed. But it is a really cute strawberry floral series that is quite long, and what I really love about this JSK is that you can unbutton the whole JSK, so you can open it up. This is one of my favorite cuts in terms of the detailings. I really enjoy the tears and the ruffles and the pinned that this series has. I have two other long JSKs and these are in brown. So first up is the Loretta Rose tiered JSK. This was a re-release of the original Loretta Rose. The lace on the front for the tiered version doesn't match up as well as it does on the original Loretta Rose, but I still think that the tiered version is quite gorgeous. It can fit quite a bit of petticoat and I quite enjoy the rose and the warmth of this JSK. It's one of my favorite series. The other long JSK that I have is the Flora the Flower Goddess tiered JSK. I got this one on sale and it is another flower print. Innocent World really does flower prints really well. But this one's based off of Greek mythology, so it has flowers and Flora the Greek goddess in a bust on the bottom, either a plate or a jewelry holder sort of thing. This is also one of Innocent World's underbust JSKs, so it has such lovely lace detailing on the bottom bust. All right, moving on to the blues. The first one is the Innocent World Rabbit Letter Sailor Collar JSK. This was part of the made to order in 2017. And Rabbit Letter is one of my favorite series from Innocent World. It features, as you can guess, rabbits and letters. I really love the postal detailing on the bottom hemline and the rabbits are super cute. I really enjoy the sailor collar and the back has a really cute bow on the back of the sailor collar. 
This JSK is fully sheared, so it is quite comfortable to wear as well. All right, another floral series from Innocent World, and this is the Classical Gather Flare JSK. This is a really funny blue shade, but I love it paired with the brown accent detailing. Florals on this dress is quite gorgeous, and there are some days where I particularly enjoy looking like a grandmother's couch. It is a solid JSK. Definitely one that I reach for a lot, but I don't really take a lot of photos of. Next up is one of my favorite series, and this is the Moonlit Walk series. This is the high-waisted cut, and I really adore this series because it features the London skyline on the bottom of this dress. The constellations and this colorway is absolutely wonderful. Seriously, it's one of the best sort of skyline print dresses that I particularly enjoy. Next JSK is one I wear often as well, and this is the Tea Time JSK. I originally got this release in 2012, and this is a tartan series that I've worn so often throughout the years. It is a solid JSK series with the lovely tartan, but I really love the detailing. It's got really cute pockets and the bottom lace and ribbon really ties in this whole JSK. For me, this is what Innocent World does best at. They're solid JSKs that can be worn on the daily. We're almost there at the end. This next OP is another tartan OP. I purchased this OP in Japan and I have never actually found out the name of this piece. It's been almost five years and I still haven't found out which OP this is from Innocent World. But it is a basic tartan OP with a lovely Peter Pan collar. That's one of my favorite design elements in Lolita. The Peter Pan collar is just so adorable. And it is a great solid piece. And this is really funny. The last three are all OPs that are black with Peter Pan collars because I have an obsession with Peter Pan collars and I actually have the names of them this time. So this first one is the Short Sleeve Round Collar OP. This was released in 2016. It's got a really cute bow on the sleeves and the bodice is quite fitted. There's lovely white buttons on the front and once again, that Peter Pan collar. There is little rose lace on this Peter Pan collar as well. It's a great dress and it's polyester so it doesn't wrinkle as easily. This next one is also another short sleeved one and this is the flat color ribbon OP. This one is actually an A-line cut in comparison to the other OP that I just showed you. Once again, a lovely Peter Pan collar. This one also has rose lace on the collar and because this one is an A-line dress, it is quite comfortable to wear. Once again, another dress that I wear frequently but I never take photos of. And then the last OP is the Alice's Miniature Rose OP. This OP has long sleeves and once again, a lovely rose lace on both the sleeves and the Peter Pan collar. What's different about this OP is the lovely heart buttons up front and the fitted cut of this OP. This is also polyester, so once again, making it easy to care for and wear. Little to no ironing or steaming. I really enjoy the fit and flair of this piece. And that is all the other Japanese brands that I have in my Lolita wardrobe. I do have a few Taobao pieces, but I feel like it's not enough to make a video about. But let me know if you're interested in seeing the Taobao pieces that I do have. I feel like I'm quite selective in what I bring in that are just not Japanese brands. <laughs> let me know if you have a favorite piece that I've showcased in my wardrobe video. Please feel free to check out the Angelic Pretty and the Baby the Starshine Bright portion of the wardrobe if you're interested. I know those brands are a little bit more popular than these four brands that I featured for this video. And with that, I think I'm going to end the video here. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye!